The CARICOM Youth Ambassadors Program has been implemented well over 20 years now and actually it came about to highlight the important role that young people play in regional integration and so our CARICOM Youth Ambassadors we usually have two one male and one female um, primarily they are two educate young people on regional issues that um, uh, that affect them um, they had to they had to advocate on the rights of young people be that that advocacy um, be that advocate in chief for the things that um, that pertain to young people um, as well they they strive to integrate young people in um, regional or sub-regional development and also they, they promote regional integration. Um, so these young people, the, the CARICOM Youth Ambassadors are really important in terms of education, in terms of advocacy, integration and also promotion. And their target group, um, their, ta their target group is young people and so with the programs and activities they would initiate, it would seek to ensure that regional integration is promoted and that the rights of young people are always advocated for on that level. My name is Jacob Nesto, I'm 26 years old. I'm from the community of Risen Agarababono. Um, I got involved in youth work at the Entripo Secondary School, which is my alma mater. Um, I was a part of mostly all clubs and groups at that school um, because I felt like I wanted to contribute to school life and I was a troubled teen, to be honest. So I really wanted to change my appearance in the eyes of my teachers and my peers. My name is Rejan Montut. I'm from the community of Grizzly. Um, right now, I'm the president of the Grizzly North Youth and Sports Council, as well as the secretary to the Grizzly Football League and Grizzly Benders Association. My term in youth development actually started pretty young. I was about 14 when I first joined the Grizzly Community Action Group. Um, and from then on, having different experiences and involvement with the Ministry of Youth and then getting engaged in youth, well, the Youth and Sports Council. Um, I then got on to the Grizzly Youth Development Council and then went on to the National Youth Council and now Grizzly Youth and Sports Council. At the school level, I've always been the school representative for various activities. You know, school usually selects a student to go um, out to represent them. Um, also, I like to partake in anything that would further pro provide self-development for myself. Um, not only that, I'm someone who is naturally curious and I love to learn. So really and truly, it was really making myself marketable and putting myself out there to gain the opportunities that I deem beneficial to my group and to helping those around me because sometimes you tend to realize that the young people around you need that upliftment and sometimes they need that pillar to really look up to. The first group I joined was when I was about 14 and it was just one day my sister told me, hey, I know of this group and you'll be interested, go. And that's just it, I just went. It was a, a voluntary group. We were doing things like clean up campaigns and hamper donations. And from there, I just fell in love with the whole process of volunteering and being selfless and giving of yourself to your community. And then from there, it just went on and on and on. My aunt Tecla de Turville, my mom Ingrid Neston, my dad Peter Jabaptis were my main pillars, especially my grandmom. But um, for me, it really all started when I joined Cash Essential Youth and Sports Council, which I currently am the second vice president. And I'm also on the Babono Youth Development 
committee as well. The other thing as well is that I've been very vocal in um, youth marginalization, which really focuses on youth who tend to feel that they're not represented at forums. So you have people with disabilities, LGBTQI persons, grassroots persons, those basic things. And really and truly coming from that background, you really need to have an understanding as well. And um, when being a youth worker, I try my best to not judge because that is basically the key principle for me is really understanding everyone's mindset and concept and really what have you in this sort of position in life. It was the satisfaction of seeing um, the service that you can do for your community, as well as I got different opportunities. For example, I remember my first community debate, and as nervous as I was, as you could literally have heard the nervousness in my voice, but I was so proud of myself. That was my first public speaking opportunity. So I was a benefactor of the development of, and it was a voluntary debate, persons who volunteered their time to come in and judge, to organize the debate, and having your community support you in that venture also was something that just stuck my interest into the whole youth development, community activism work. At school, because of my, I would not say, um, issues or anything, but being young, you didn't want to really join the um, school council or anything of that sort. I was more in pair helpers, um, dukers, these types of groups. Um, at a very, a very early age, I took a lot on myself to do debating. Um, so when it comes to speaking, that was my key focus because I really wanted to enunciate my words properly. And as a young male especially, you find that amongst males, we find that literacy is not something that is really common. So you really want to stand out in the crowd, especially for opportunities. I have gotten the support from my community. Persons always would stop me and tell me, you know, keep up the great work that you do. They see the efforts and also getting support from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports. Here is like home for me. I know if I ever need anything, um, I could come here. Persons I've worked with, our youth and sports officer, Sarah Lee Williams, who has been a major support from the get-go for me in terms of youth development, has always been like a mentor has always been there for any questions I have and to see. She'll always pick you up. She has that tough love kind of mechanism. So if she sees that you're probably going um, the wrong way for an initiative or project, we'll send her two cents in to guide you with that. Also Miguel Trim, who was the STO when I was just getting into the field of youth development. He has a wealth of knowledge, a great resource persons. So, you know, having these people around you, having that community support has really been helpful in the whole process of youth development and I would say becoming of myself because I consider, I just don't consider it a thing that I do, I see it as me. I was the youth parliamentarian for Barbado and that was a really nice experience. But one of my goals that I've always set for myself in life was to be the CARICOM Youth Ambassador. And I always believe that to be the change that you need to see, you need to be that change in the world. And that was a saying from Mahatma Gandhi. So for me in myself, I felt like that was the key post for me to really further the gender of youth and to really understand what's affecting youth, not only within my country, but within the CARICOM framework, because I've represented St. Lucia on many boards, forums, and these types of things. I feel most excellent and delighted, to be honest. Um, I first heard of the program while I was on the Grizzly Youth Development Council. Um, the first time, I've, I applied before and I didn't get through. I think this was the third time or second time I'm applying actually. Um, so when finally I saw the applications again, so I figured, you know what, why not? <laughs> Let's just give it a chance. So it was an application process, I applied, and then there was an interview 
as well. I did the interview. I felt very good about myself after the interview. And then, then finally getting the call. Well, it was a call to come to collect the letter and finally seeing that you are actually the CARICOM EF ambassador. It, was, it felt like a big achievement for me. Um, it has been something I've always looked at as being, an, as how, how would I put it? You know, just this great achievement, like seeing, okay, all the youth work you've been doing, um, this is one way of you being awarded for it, and, and again, a way of you furthering that youth work on a regional level. During the interview, you could tell on people's faces basically how well you're doing during the interview process, and I felt very confident about leaving that room. But the thing was, when I got the call for the letter and reading that letter, I honestly cried because, I mean, it's a really huge accomplishment for a young person to be selected as a CARICOM Youth Ambassador. And for me, I was just praying that the female CARICOM Ambassador was someone I could really cope with because when it comes to such a position you really want to you don't want to have a, a push and pull effect you really want everything to flow effectively and getting region was really the idealistic person for me but um most of all really it's about um really representation not only for yourself but um for me being the caricom youth ambassador it's about being selfless um it's really about giving your all to um the community on a whole The CARICOM Youth Ambassador is there to educate young people on the policies and initiatives of CARICOM, especially ones that benefit them so that persons can gain a more, how should I say, a, more, a greater understanding and awareness of what it is to be a CARICOM citizen and how this initiative called CARICOM benefits them as a citizen. In essence, that is what it is, promoting the CARICOM initiative, um, to, especially towards young people. Right now, me and my colleague have started a blood supply drive. Our first drive was in Barbono about two Sundays ago, which turned out we had a very good community turnout, so we're very thankful for the residents and also the Barbono Youth and Sports Council who collaborated with us on that activity. Um, we plan to continue it, although COVID-19 is throwing off the plans a little bit, but we want to continue it until we hit all the major communities in St. Lucia to sensitize persons on the need um, to donate um, blood as we are aware our blood bank are always in critically low um, measures in terms of the amount of blood capacity that they have and also to promote um, health and which is one of the pillars of CARICOM for this year. In addition to that, we have also started our CARICOM webinars. So we did our first webinar with the Grizzly North, Grizzly South, Kashi Central and Barbono Youth and Sports Council. And we're now going to do our second one with the rest of the Youth and Sports Councils as well as the executive of the National Youth Council, which again, basically to highlight, inform persons of what CARICOM is, um, highlight the different initiatives, and also the different um, ways they can benefit just as a result of St. Lucia being signed onto the Treaty of Shangoramas, which is the CARICOM initiative. My advice would be every opportunity that knocks at your door, you don't necessarily need to take it, but grab what you think is best for you because at the end of the day, it's going to benefit you in the long run. Um, the other thing as well would be networking. Um, that was something I practiced from a very young age. And when you network with people, it's basically a reflection of who you are as a person, the people you constantly keep around you and you constantly keep in touch with. Because when opportunities then arise, then you're someone who comes to mind based on what you have produced thus far. Youth development, community work, volunteerism um, is a selfless act. You do it because of the passion, you do it because you love it. Um, it can very much benefit you in terms of your professional development, a lot of the skills that I have now, and even the, for my current, because I don't work full time in volunteerism, youth development work and that sort of thing, but I work in IT um, at the Court of Appeal. and. I could remember clearly some of the things that I was able to put on my CV that I still have on my CV started, I developed those skills in youth development work. So PR, marketing, 
um, secretarial work, administrative work, planning, event planning, project management, um, leadership, communication, organization, all of these skills were skills that I developed as a result of being part of the youth movement. So there is that indirect feel that just being part and parcel of any initiative can bring to you as a young person. Um, and secondly, I would just say that you may not see the benefits directly. So it's not like you come into it and you get paid, or you come into it and you will get a direct benefit, but there are long-term things. You get to network with persons, and your network is your net worth. So a lot of the people, a lot of the opportunities that I have received in life, I could trace it back to that one day deciding to volunteer at that initiative. So I would send these words to young persons. The CARICOM Reform Ambassadors Program is a program of CARICOM where we actually select a male and a female ambassador to represent their country and young people within their, their country, where they're actually going to um, advocate for those young persons within their, 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 within their country towards our, um, for, to our leaders and, and CARICOM as a whole. So that um, program actually um, help out those two young ambassadors we normally select to represent St. Lucia to, like I said, to advocate for, 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 for young people in St. Lucia. So in, what they normally would do is actually represent young persons at, at forums in, in, um, in the Caribbean. And also it helps them to actually um, meet other leaders uh, within the region. So it, will, it actually benefits those young persons because they now develop um, leadership skills, they develop um, advocacy skills. They also um, develop um, program um, management skills as well because they actually get a chance to implement program within the country as as um, CARICOM reform ambassador. Um, the other important thing for, for those CARICOM ambassadors as well is that they, they um, get a chance to actually um, network because that's one of the key skills that is needed, networking skills. So those kind of, of, of skills and, and actually um, ideas, they, they actually get to, to um, benefit them as young um, ambassadors. <laughs>